Zoos are going through a lot of changes at the moment and, and zoos owe it to the general population to um, highlight the plight of the species that they, they breed in captivity. Um, so um, I still think that's a very important role they play and um, zoos should be springboards for conservation in the wild, um, such as the projects that we manage here in Central Africa, um, which is why I think we are um, you know, especially uh, pertinent con conservation foundation today. But, uh, but you know, we, we've, we, we've tried to bridge that gap, gap also by taking gorillas from captivity in Kent, second generation captive born gorillas, back out to uh, the project in Gabon, um, which obviously raised publicity for, for the Western Lowland gorilla in general and gave these individuals a chance at a second life in the wild or a first life in the wild. We took seven out last um, July. We lost one um, two months ago from parasite overload um, and the others are continuing to, to survive. Well we've sent Przelski wild horses back to Mongolia in the 80s. We've sent uh, and continue to send black rhinos back down to South Africa where they are breeding. There's only 3,000 of them left in the world. Um, and anywhere we can um, reintroduce species, we try and do it. It's, it's obviously extremely expensive and um, time consuming. So you have to really pick your, um, your strongest um, species. And obviously with 106 Western Lone Brothers bred at Hounds and Port Lim, and this is why we're, we're trying to do something um, in these two countries with Western Lone Gorillas. We are afraid that the project won't succeed, um, however we've just had, um, literally two months ago, the birth of our first infant to a reintroduced female um, in a uh, viable um, gorilla group and this means that um, if the group continue to breed and the population is uh, genetically viable. Um, there could be a self-sustaining population in the area that we, we are now protecting, which is uh, one of the biggest benchmarks for our success. What is it? Dung beetle! We, we are working in conjunction with the Gabonese and Congolese governments and um, when we have reached uh, when we have reached a point of stability where the gorillas are taking care of themselves and the projects can be financed um, safe, self-sustainably, then we would like to pull out. You know, it, it's in the agreement we've signed with both countries that uh, when that happens, they can take over the projects and, and hopefully benefit from um, 
for the interest that um, foreigners who want to come and visit gorillas will be able to um, to give to local communities and the countries themselves. Adult male gorilla um, in his prime will have the most extraordinary uh, 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 crest and, um, and musculature that you could have ever imagine. I mean, they're um, extremely dense and heavy and uh, glossy um, fur. And Pick up a, um, a juvenile gorilla and you're immediately struck by the muscular weight um, and, uh, and they're obviously low to the ground and built like wrestlers so uh, any sort of uh, rough and tumble can quickly accelerate out of control and they love to play they're like humans you know fighting is part of how they figure out you know, their strengths in the group and their character <laughs> Males form their groups by being joined, they're picked by females. Solitary males are chosen by females. They'll join a male um, that they'll, they'll meet in the forest and they'll, they'll leave their group, their eternal, eternal group. I stay here and I'm part of life. Okay, Yeah. We've got covered in sweat because yeah. it's quite distracting. My fair lady. <laughs> Tell me. I love this panic shot too. Huh? Well, I thought you guys are crossing and I filmed you. Well, we are. 
What do you mean I should go? I want to film you guys going there. Risking your lives in front of the camera. Over there. Black one. C'est quoi, monsieur? Deine Kamera ist besser.